everyone. Could someone send audio? Make sure I have. Testing. Thank you. Give a few more minutes for people to finish joining. The join rate is starting to slow down. Uh, someone who has access, um, nudge Lars, see if he's planning to join. Thanks everyone for taking time out of your day to visit with the tools team and um, help us keep track and on target for our priorities for the things that we're working on. The agenda has been out for a couple of days. Is there anything that anyone would like to add or reorder in the agenda that we've published in the notes? All right. Thank you again for sharing your video. We like for this to be an in-person meeting as close as we can get, um, but do remember that it is being recorded and the recording will be posted at YouTube um, after the meeting is over. I will jump in then on our hot topics. Uh, the hottest topic for most of us that have been working on it is the infrastructure transition project. I uh, saw a lot of activity um, at the end of the year and um, it is very much the, the hot working spot for us at the moment. We're working on building a roadmap that we can share with the community to provide insight into um, when to expect the different applications that we're working with to move. Um, for now, our focus is on having a proof of concept deployed in production of different kinds of applications, starting with the simpler ones. Um, we're expecting to have author tools deployed end of this week, beginning of next week. We're expecting to have the um, 
analytics.ietf.org, basically our Matomo instance, um, deployed by the end of next week, and a the wiki, the primary um, instance of the wiki.js, the wiki.ietf.org instance, moved um, onto the new fabric by the end of next week as well. This will um, have exercised us deploying applications that use all of the different kinds of databases that we intend to use, and we'll be moving on from those into the more complicated applications like Mail Archive and the uh, um, data tracker itself. We are also working towards having the mail chain transitioned in this first bit of work. We are um, very close to being ready to move to Mailman 3, as mentioned before. That, may, that transition is going to happen directly on IETFA. I'm working today on building a message to the community on what to expect when this transition happens. For the most part, it's going to be um, mostly transparent. The UI changes from the web-based interface in Mailman 2 to what Pistorius provides. There will be a dance that um, people will have to go through to claim the Mailman 3 account associated with their email address. Um, the message that I put together will explain this, but it will basically be a round trip with the website to prove ownership of a mailbox. And the uh, initial transition to Mailman 3, Mailman 3 will have a different set of credentials than the data tracker credentials like Mailman 2 does now. And we will subsequently move to integrating Mailman 3 with the data tracker to, via OIDC to use data tracker credentials to get to the, the, the Mailman admin interface. Um, as many of you have seen before, our very long-term plan is for subscribers to not have to interact with Postorius directly at all. It would only um, be uh, through the data tracker, the data tracker would manipulate Mailman 3 using its REST API on their behalf, but moderators would still end up touching Postorius to take care of moderator tasks. All right, unless someone has questions or additional um, things that they'd like to go into on this high-level discussion of our infrastructure transition project. I'll move on. We'll, we'll be coming back to details on individual things we're transitioning later in the in the call. I see two raised hands. Let's start with John. Yeah, you can tell me whether this should go later, but we currently have Mailman hacked. So basically, if you subscribe to any list, you can post to every list. Have, have, have we moved that forward or is that stuck with, is that related to post confirm? So that is tied up with post confirm, and the plan is to move that forward. Okay. So, Eric, you and say just to say thank you because I did my on my own the mailman two to mailman three for my own list. It's not an easy task, and the integration of the data tracker uh, will be very much welcome. All right. Cindy, would you bring us up to date on where we are with the IAB website? Is Cindy here? Um, I think we lost Cindy, but she put her updates in the doc. Um, the public wiki has been moved to Wiki.js, so the IAB will hopefully sign off on that um, this week. Um, and we're just compiling the final bits, like the list of redirects um, and a couple of small content updates. Awesome. So to be clear, speaking of this in terms of transition to the new infrastructure, we will deploy the new IEB website on IETFA, replacing the existing website, and then move it into the new infrastructure when its turn comes around. The next item under hot topics was to point to the 
um, Clarity feature branch that adds a banner to non-IETF stream RFCs and internet drafts. Uh, the ISG and the stream managers have um, approved the uh, what that branch is currently producing, and we expect to uh, deploy it um, probably Thursday of this week. Additional eyes on the branch are quite welcome. Follow the link that's in the notes. If you see anything that looks amiss, let us know. Um, we would appreciate the opportunity to correct it before it hits production. All right, those were primarily the things that I expected that we would spend a lot of time talking about, and we haven't spent a lot of time talking. Um, the, we've got the FYIs and some discussion of the transition projects below. Um, I will touch on those briefly, but for the format for these calls in general, I would like to take these sections as read. So unless somebody has questions about the follow-on to the deployment of feet RFC. I'm going to move past that one. The same with our next post-confirmed change, although, John, if you wanted to just briefly sketch what that PR is actually doing for people so that they don't have to decode it, it might be nice. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Is this is this is this the one that fixes the the bounce address, or is this yes. more than that? It's it's the last one that you put in, so it, it it applies the fix to the bounce address to more things, I believe. Yeah, I mean the <clears throat> given the uh, always exciting interaction with large mail systems and their and their and their more strict authentication rules, um, forwarding stuff is really hard, and so what. <clears throat> What we are now doing for forwarded mail is that we are trying very hard not to change the content. So if it has a decom signature, the decom signature remains valid, which makes most recipient mail systems happy. And for things that aren't decom signed, um, if we just forward it without changing the bounce address, the existing um, <clears throat> bounce address will be that of the original sender, which, you know, and the, and the SPF validation will fail because it's coming from our, our server rather than their server. So we, so we basically invented a, a fake address forwarding something at ietf.org and we're going to put that bounce address on everything that gets forwarded so that would mean that at least at google and maybe microsoft that makes stuff more likely to be to to be accepted because then the at least the spf will, will always be valid i mean i think in the longer run i think we're going to have to think harder about how to make forwarding work as the rules get harder and harder but you know it's a first as a short-term band-aid this certainly won't hurt and it'll make things a little easier and <clears throat> As always, like if the change makes if if we make the change and you see things are worse, let us know. We can try and figure out like did we break something or are we just noticing something that was broken all along. All right. So things that we have in transition at the moment, we've moved the Yang catalog into DigitalOcean as a um, temporary step. Um, the Instructions to bring up an instance from scratch have some gaps and the configuration of the system as it comes up from scratch have some gaps. Um, Joe Clark has been working, um, calling in from his vacation to um, help close some of those gaps. The service that we have deployed at the moment is not fully functional. There are some missing modules and Joe is going to be diving in to find out why they haven't been picked up, but it's not likely to happen again until next week when Joe has um, cycles to dive in to look. Oh, and Joe came in right yeah. as we were finishing. There you go. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I had, I had to take care of something. Yeah, uh, Robert said it well. Um, essentially, it, the, it is the vendor modules, so Cisco, Huawei, um, Juniper, that are missing. And 
for the life of me, I haven't been able to determine why. So I want to look at what they had, what Pantheon had, and and see what we're missing. Um, there are a lot of moving parts. Open Search, the, the Cisco Conf D, uh, Redis, um, and some magical incantation is is likely going to allow that all to work. Uh, however, for the most part, the tools are working with the IETF modules. And as far as I can tell, all of the IETF modules uh, are there. Um, so things like the uh, search, the module details, the impact analysis, those are all working uh, right now with the DigitalOcean instance. We just need to figure out why those vendor modules aren't coming in. One of the other um, portions of the application that's not yet functional is the um, OIDC authentication for the administration section of the website. We band-aided that by blocking the basically gating traffic to it using Cloudflare until we can um, straighten out why OIDC is not um, being used as we expected it would have been by the by the admin and the API admin portions of the site. Most of the rest of these things that are in transition, I'm going to leave to be taken as read, unless somebody has questions about them. We touched on the high points that are in here. Um, I will call people's attention if you've not read carefully to read the section on Mailman 3 and how much of the prep for what we're doing for Mailman 3 is feeding actually back into the Mailman 3 project. Next, we've got a series of updates on the development work that's continuing to happen in parallel with the uh, work on changing the infrastructure that we're deploying on. Again, I'd like to take most of these as read. Quite a lot happened with the data tracker. Um, quite a lot has been happening with XML RFC. We have um, significant progress happening on preparing the mail archive for the infrastructure transition. And there is a lot of work going into um, the modernization of the RPC's workflow and, and editing. Not as much as we would like on those latter because we are spending quite a lot of time on the infrastructure transition, but they are not at a dead stop. Anyone have any questions on any of the above? All right, we're now to the open discussion in any other business section of the meeting. If there is something that you think we should be addressing that we're not, if there is anything at all that you'd like to bring up for discussion. Just one thing, uh, Roman brought the, the staging discussion to the ISG. We have not yet reached um, a decision simply because we were not even too many people in the last week uh, telechat. Uh, I guess it will be uh, on Thursday this week, but of course the discussion will be, the result will be yes, right? In All a right. sense, remove and purge the, the staging directory there. Yep, that is the plan. And for those that haven't seen this go by, there's a directory that for um, historic reasons is completely exposed at www.ietf.org that is the place that people who are that, that submissions of drafts are uploaded into other submissions of other things are also uploaded into it but for the purposes of this conversation we're talking about drafts um, it is not being 
groomed over time. So there are things lying around there for um, a couple of decades. Um, it's inconsistently what has and hasn't been removed. We're adopting a new policy to remove things. And in the long term, moving to a model where that is not a publicly exposed um, thing at all, that um, internet draft submitters, um, the, a, a draft that has not yet moved all the way to posted would only be viewable by the submitters and authors. So uh, requiring data tracker account access, and that's uh, that's the thing that the um, one of the things that the IHC is going to be discussing. Jay, you had entered the queue. Uh, mine is a separate point to this. Okay. Um, if somebody has questions, then I think we can move on. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, so just to update you all that we have um, now employed another developer. Um, he will be starting in mid-February. Um, we budgeted for um, one or possibly two more developers um, as we continue to um, invest heavily in our software development side. Um, we'll introduce him uh, closer to the time, I think, rather than now, but just to give you a heads up that that's all under there. You know, the queue management part of the new vehicle interface looks intriguing. Um, pop quiz at the end of the call, are there any topics that people here would like to spend time discussing as a group at one of the upcoming tools team meetings. If anything pops to the top of your head, jump in with it now. Otherwise, um, feel free to send a note to a list or directly to me. This is a time that we can use to have a uh, group discussions of um, some of the thornier things that um, we're facing. And I apologize for not having a couple of them queued up um, on this call for us to, to spend time on. I would remind everybody that we moved March's meeting, the meeting after next, a week early to avoid the travel window for people that are um, traveling to the IETF meeting in Brisbane. Beyond that, I think we've hit the end of our agenda and I want to thank everyone again for investing their time. And we will thank see you. Thank you, Robert.